Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Carrie, museum educator from the Hyde Collection, and I have two very special friends with me. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? You can say your name. I'm Lily. Hello, Lily. And who else do we have here today? Someone who's too shy. Someone's too shy. And that's Bella. So these are two of my friends that um, I haven't seen for a really long time, right guys? It's been a while. Um, so I used to work in a library in a town called Margaretville, a very special library called the Fairview Public Library. And you guys would come to um, story time and other fun things that we did at the library together. So it's been, it's been a little bit of a while since we've seen each other, um, but this is kind of a great opportunity since we're all doing learning online that we can connect with people that we don't see all the time, right? So this is kind of fun. So now I work at a art museum and I wanted to see if you guys want to talk about some art with me. So I am sharing a picture with you guys. Can you guys see the artwork on your screen? Is there a picture with like kings and queens and a castle? With all art, take a deep breath and start looking at the artwork. What do you notice? What kinds of things attract your eye? Okay, so this is a special painting um, that we have on exhibit right now, part of our exhibition called Images of the People, Russian Lacquer Painting. And a lot of the paintings that we have are on little lacquer boxes, um, almost like jewelry boxes or something special that you would put inside, and they depict fairy tales. And I know we probably did a lot of fairy tales during story time at the library, but this one you may or may not have heard before. Um, it is a Russian fairy tale, okay? Now, um, the library that I like to visit up here where I live now and um, where I work is in Glens Falls and I go to the Crandall Public Library. Um, I got some really great books from there about Russian folk tales. Um, this one is called Russian Folk Tales Be Told by G James Roden. Um, illustrated by Andrew Brakespear, and this has a really great, a lot of bunch of really great fairy tales, but it actually doesn't have the fairy tale that we see in this picture. So I'm going to tell you the fairy tale, and we're going to follow along with the picture. We could actually tell us the entire story throughout the whole picture, okay? So once upon a time, there was a very rich czar, and a czar is like a uh, king in, in Russia. So we're going to start off in the middle of our picture, and I'm going to see if I can zoom in. You guys see it a little bit better? There you go. There's our rich czar. I'm kind of off to the side here. And he was told by an astrologer or a wise man that in order to protect his kingdom, he needs to put a golden cockerel at the highest point of his castle. So there's the, you guys see the golden cockerel? It's kind of like a bird in the middle of it. Cockerel is also like a rooster. And I know you guys have, you're around chickens and roosters once in a while, right? Are, are roosters nice or are they kind of protective, right? They protect their chickens, their hens. So there's the king and the wise man and the golden cockerel. So he puts it up on the highest point of his kingdom and you can see his golden cockerel on the highest, highest tower to protect his kingdom. And for two years, it stays silent. There's no noise, no sirens, nothing. It doesn't see anything and it's very peaceful in the kingdom. But suddenly it starts making lots of noise. And that means there's danger afoot. That means somebody's coming. Uh-oh, we're not sure exactly what's going on. So the king has his two princes, his two sons go out to figure out what was going on. And you might be able to see the two princes riding on the horses. There's one green horse and one brown horse. Those are the two princes. Now for a while, it's quiet and they don't know what's going on. It's like a week's gone by and the king hasn't heard from his princes, from his sons. So he sends out another group of, let me see if I can move my thing over here, group of men to go off and to find out what was going on and what happened to the princes. Well, it turns out, and see if I can zoom in and out for us, let me zoom this way, that the princes ended up fighting each other. Let me zoom in, there they are. And they accidentally or on purpose killed each other. They ended up hurting each other. And there's the king and his two sons, and they're sad. He's going, Oh no, what happened? Now, sometimes in fairy tales, we talk about life and death, right? 
It's all magic and fantasy. And see if I can zoom in on the part what happens next is that a beautiful maiden, a queen appears. You see her in the little tent? She appears and she entrances the king. It's almost like she puts a spell on him. And he goes, oh my goodness, I can't believe such a beautiful prince, uh, queen is showed up here. And he decides that he's going to return to his kingdom with this beautiful queen. All right. And I'm gonna show you the part where they start to return to the kingdom. It's all the way on the bottom here. You guys see it? There's the king and the queen, and this new queen, this beautiful queen in a chariot coming back to the kingdom. And he's giving everybody gold coins and they're celebrating. And you know who shows up? You remember in the beginning that astrologer, the wise man who told him to take the golden cockerel and put it on the highest point of his castle? He shows up again. He's there in the blue with the pointy hat. And he tells the king, you know what? I did you a special favor and I think you should repay me. And the king says, sure, I'll give you gold. I'll give you my best goat, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. And the wise man says, no, I don't want that. I want the beautiful queen. And I think that's kind of weird that you just want a person, right? You can't really own a person. It's a fairy tale and it was made a long, long time ago. So the king laughs at him and goes, nope, you're not giving my beautiful queen. I don't care what you say. And suddenly the czar drops dead right on the spot. Nobody knows what happened to him. And before you know it, the cockerel, the golden cockerel flies down, goes near the czar, looks at him and then flies away and disappears. And mysteriously, the queen disappears as if she never even existed. Nobody really knows what happened. And that's the story, the end. <laughs> I know, it's kind of a strange fairy tale. Sometimes fairy tales have a couple of whole plot holes to try to figure out what was actually going on. Now this the Golden Cockerel is a story that was part of poetry written by Alexander Pushkin, and it inspired many other types of art forms, like ballets and operas. So I wanted you guys to look at this artwork because I thought it was kind of interesting that the entire story is in the artwork. Now, do you remember where the beginning of the story was? What part of the picture was in the be was the beginning of the story? Where it shows the wise men and the king. Yeah, right there in like the middle part a little bit, right? And then it kind of winds up through the top and then it kind of winds back down on the bottom and it shows all the different parts of it. But the beginning is very big. The king looks very big compared to a lot of the other scenes or the other parts. They make them smaller and they're in kind of like layers, right? Um, and then the bottom shows the, the end of the story. So I wanted you guys to think of um, a board game. Have you ever played Candyland? Yeah. So you start in one spot and you have to follow the ladder all the way through all the different places, all the magical places that you go to in Candyland. And eventually you end up at the end. It's kind of like following the story. And it's similar to uh, this type of uh, painting that the painting that the Russian lacquer paintings um, painters were creating. That they were creating an entire fairy tale in one whole. Is there anything that's kind of special that you notice? There's lots and lots and lots of tiny details. Right, that's very good. They use lots of details because to tell an entire story, you need to add a lot of little things. And there's also lots of details and patterns in the clothes or the jewels, or even on the side, there's like a um, border that's really beautiful and painted in gold paint. So I was thinking a fun project to do at home, and this is um, something that everybody can do at home if you have some paper or any type of drawing material, is to recreate a story or fairy tale, um, having the whole thing on one piece of paper. So I brought my little, my big piece of paper, okay? And I'm gonna use my marker. So if I was going to tell the story of the golden cockerel, I might start with the main part in the beginning, right? You see, I kind of drew it, and this is the main part. Well, here's the king standing there. And then I might continue the story up like this, and I can start, continue the story, the scene kind of like that. I know it's kind of hard to see on our screen. Um, but just like Candyland, where you, you can walk in one whole linear line, you can do that too on your paper. You can start your story in one section, and wind it all the way, and I gotta write the word end over here. You guys see that? 
get my face up. So you can start in one corner and end the story somewhere else and create scenes all the way through, okay? So I was thinking if you have paper and markers or crayons or anything else at home, you can tell a story. It could be a real story, something that happened to you, or it can be, be a make-believe story. And you tell the entire story from start to finish on one piece of paper. You think you could do that? Yeah, let's try it. Awesome job. All right, so when you make your artwork, you guys can share back with me and we're included in our video. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Here I've included my drawing about the history of Charlotte and Lewis Hyde and the Hyde Collection. If you look in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see the French Prime paper mill. You'll also see Mrs. Hyde with her mother and her sisters. And the artworks that they, Lewis and Charlotte collected together in their home, which is pictured on the bottom right hand corner. I can't wait to see what stories you can draw.